Hello friends, welcome to another episode of GP Speaks. So today we have a very talented visual artist. She has done a professional training in fashion design and she has worked in a fashion industry for a very long time. But few years ago, four years ago she realized that her true calling was into art. That's when she left her job and she started painting full time. It is such a short span of time. Uh, she has developed a very beautiful and her own unique style of her own. She has also inspired thousands of young artists with her simply simple yet elegant style of work. She has exhibited her work in various countries. Her paintings are passionately connected by many art lovers around the world. So, without further ado, let me welcome Mona Viswarupa, also known as Monarism. Hi Mona, nice to have you with us. Welcome to our channel. Thank you so much, Saurav. And thank you, Grey Pixel, for giving me this opportunity to speak to your viewers and uh, share my story with you. Thank you so much, ma'am. So, ma'am, let us begin with how, uh, you know, how what is the definition of visual art? Uh, yeah, that's a very fundamental question that you've asked. Um, see, art for me is a, is a very powerful tool. You know, like when somebody creative has uh, very strong emotions, very strong feelings or some kind of imagination or ideas that, that is looking for an outlet to be expressed and the person can do it with the, or with the use of um, words, we call it uh, poetry, we call it literature. But when words cannot define that feeling and it needs a different mode of expression, it needs a different kind of language which you call uh, probably the visual vocabulary then that becomes, that expression becomes the visual art. How you have connected the poetry with visual art. So, <laughs> so uh, ma'am, as we are talking on about visual art, so can we like maybe know how did you start your journey? I've been painting and drawing since my childhood. Uh, my father is a poet and I still remember his writing desk. He used to have a very colourful, um, you know, a paperweight that has like colours inside, circular and it is colours inside. And um, on his desk, he had a very nice assortment of uh, different types of inks. So I used to be really fascinated by those two things. You know, like uh, whenever I looked at that paperweight, uh, I imagined myself inside that stone and, you know, like dancing around in those colours, uh, around with those colours. So, um, uh, and uh, my, I watched my father uh, using the ink and writing, so I used to be really, really fascinated by those two things. So one day what happened, I took my father's ink and my mother's alta, you know, what is alta, you know, right? Alta is that red liquid that um, Indian dancers uh, and brides put on their feet. So um, in East India, uh, normally women have uh, alta at home because uh, you know, it's, uh, on special occasions they wear it on the feet. So I took my mother's alta and my father's ink and these two colors and black and red. I now I wanted to express myself, so I was looking for a medium and I didn't have a brush to use it. So what I did was I broke uh, a stick from the broom and uh, put a page from my notebook and started drawing, scribbling with that. So experimenting with those two colors. So that was my entry into the big beautiful world of art and uh, that was the start of my journey. Uh, so you have started so long back. But ma'am, <laughs> as I was uh, doing a research, uh, we got to know you were doing passion designing. So, like, you always wanted to become an artist, or like, uh, what exactly? How does it, uh, like, go, how did you got into fashion designing and stuff? Being an artist was never uh, my plan actually, because I never knew that art could be such a beautiful profession. I didn't know it. When I was small, I wanted to mimic my father and become a poet like him. And when I watched my mother getting ready to go to school, she was a teacher and uh, she would wear these beautiful cotton saris, nicely pleated and, uh, you know, and uh, go to school to teach children. So I used to imagine myself as a teacher and uh, because I wanted to wear, this, wear those saris and go to school and teach children. Uh, sometimes when I'm uh, outside uh, and looking at the night sky and those millions of stars twinkling, I, I, I wanted to know what is up there. I wanted to explore the space. So I wanted to become an astronaut as well. So like every child, I had millions of ideas, millions of dreams that I wanted to be. But uh, you know, strangely, somehow uh, being an artist was never there in the list. Uh, probably by then I didn't know any artist, uh, you know, any professional artist that uh, who I could look up to. So 
uh, I knew a lot of singers and musicians, um, you know, like poets, writers, and all that. But I didn't know any artist till then. So um, I didn't uh, really know what art world uh, holds for a person as a profession. And uh, uh, but one thing I was very sure of that I wanted to do something creative in my life. with my profession because um, something that would offer me new challenges new opportunities and new uh, newness every day that much i was uh, very very sure about that i want to do something which will offer me some kind of creativity but rest if this is going to be art or design or anything i didn't have any idea no so uh, when going back to the uh, thing where you said like you started your painting with your father's ink and your mother's alta can we know more about your childhood i think i consider myself really lucky that uh, you know uh, i had a beautiful childhood um, i'm from baripada uh, mayurbhanj district of odisha and uh, that place is a really beautiful place uh, culturally really vibrant and You know, um, yeah, culture and creativity has a big impact and role in that place, and it's a nice mix of um, tribal as well as modern culture. Baripada is uh, almost bordering West Bengal, so there is a nice confluence of two cultures mixing together, you know, Bengali and uh, Odia. My father is a poet, mother is an amazing cook and teacher, and uh, my elder sister is a singer, and younger sister is a dancer. My my grandmother, aunts, everybody wrote. Grandmother wrote in Bengali as well. She introduced. Starts to, uh, you know, Bengali literature, songs, and all that. In our household, art was like, art was an integral part of our growing up. And every single day when I woke up, I woke up to the sound of my elder sister doing riyas on uh, tanpura, and our evenings vibrated with the sound of my my younger sister doing um, you know uh, dance practices. Father has music school, so um, every evening we had musical get-togethers, and uh, there were like musicians coming over. songs being composed plays being enacted and uh, so that was the atmosphere like so many instruments around so many um, the culture of music and uh, literature was a lot in our household so um, you know that kind of somehow uh, impacted uh, my growing up and uh, you know they say childhood is um, is like a wet cement whatever falls on it it makes an impression the small small things those little uh, beauties of life uh, in the form of art and music and culture and uh, literature was kind of getting inside my system so i was soaking up all those information and experiences so i must say that i had a beautiful childhood i was blessed to have such parents who nurtured creativity and courage with a lot of love yes that is my childhood <laughs> Wow, it's such an interesting childhood, ma'am. Like uh, you used to wake up with riyas, uh, your your like your sister doing riyas, and you know in the evening your another sister is performing some dance, like doing practice of some dance. It's such a wonderful childhood. I can't even imagine that. <laughs> yeah. Right, thank, thank you. you. So as you said, like everyone in your family is an like uh, artist who, uh, someone do you know like someone sing, someone dance, someone uh, like as your father is into you know uh, writing poems and lyrics, and you also mentioned that you wanted to become a poet. So can we know more on that? Like uh, how from being a poet, like you wanted to become a poet, and you like you got into a, like visual art. Yes, I wanted to be um, a poet like my father, Sir Ram Kishori Bondi. He, um, my father, writes songs for Odia movies and you know, um, and songs for uh, All India Radio. So um, uh, I was really, really um, fascinated by what he was doing. Uh, I still remember when I was a kid, I would um, wake up in the morning, I would find my father sitting. Uh, at his desk, uh, he would have taken bath and uh, very ha- happily he was sitting and writing. So he would look at me and give a beautiful smile, and then get back to his writing. So uh, there was something in that smile, you know, like uh, that was the smile of pure bliss. Uh, that was the smile of uh, like uh, extreme joy that a creative person can smile. You know, what is more beautiful than art? Uh, what is for me what is more beautiful than art is uh, watching that artist engrossed in creating that art so um, i could see uh, my father engrossed in his art his craft and uh, writing and with uh, that happiness and joy that he he kind of uh, you know reflected around uh, i didn't know what he was doing but i wanted to uh, do exactly what he was doing so i wanted to be a poet and um, i wanted to smile that smile <laughs> 
I think for all the artists, it's at the end it comes to like having that inner peace while you are doing that art. Yes, 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 very true. Yeah. So as you said, you were, like you wanted to express yourself through art. So do you uh, did you did any like uh, training in fine arts? I don't have a like certificate per se for uh, in fine arts. My education happened in uh, in fashion and design. So uh, you know, I'll tell you. Um, till I was 13 years of age, I didn't take any like special art classes or anything because there there was no scope in my place that I was living in. So we had this basic art uh, education that happens in school, you know, in primary school as a subject. So we had only that much, and I used to be really fond of that. I used to score good marks as well in that. And um, only after 13, uh, in my 13th year or in teenage, I. Got introduced to my guru. I found my guru Shyam Prasad Patnaik, and he trained me um, very well from the beginning, from the base and foundation. So he built a very strong foundation for me in terms of you know like freehand sketching and drawing. Earlier, I had um, really nice ideas in my head. I think uh, most people, most creative people, have nice ideas in their head, and uh, you know, but it needs a lot of um, a coordination of your mind, your eyes, and your hand to put it down on paper, so so that other people can uh, can can enjoy it as well. And um, till I met my guru, I didn't have that uh, skill. So um, you know, uh, so my sir's training really really helped me in watercolor and freehand sketching, drawing. We used to do like 60, 70 sketches in a day and quick sketching and. And lot of sketching, so he kind of took out the fear of making mistakes from my head. And later, I went to do you know, fashion design at Neft, and I met such amazing teachers there, like really, really inspiring teachers. And uh, there, I learned the nuances of human body, the the female form, um, textiles, fabric, and details, textures, and all those things. You know? And then uh, later, I went on to uh, do my masters at uh, Milan in IIT, and there as well, I met some amazing teachers. So, um, uh, you know, like I have had uh, really amazing gurus and teachers all my life who guided me and taught me a lot. And uh, during working also in fashion design, I got to learn a lot uh, from amazing mentors and amazing, um, you know, uh, people I worked with. I don't have a like degree per se in fine arts, but uh, fashion and art I think are kind of very similar to each other because uh, both are. um expressions of you know some creative ideas one is maybe in 2d and 3d or uh, fashion is uh, more like um, you know um uh, is an answer to a problem or a question but uh, art could be the question itself you know so um so the the fundamentals of art and design are pretty similar because um, you know they are based on the same principles same logic and uh, the aesthetics of design and art both are pretty similar so i didn't find much of difference between the uh, the two when i switched so uh, if, like in, in the world there are many different kinds of learners it depends on the learner who is learning instead of you know, the, the the certificate which says that you have learned because i think for an artist more than the certificate what's important is uh, your body of work so um, if you look back at history we have um, different kind of archers okay one is arjun one is uh, karna and one is uh, ekilavya so their way way of learning was very different from each other right so one was guided by guru one was watching from a distance one was doing self learning by his talent it's up to the the person who is learning more than uh, you know uh, the the degree which says yeah. you are qualified that of course adds to the confidence but uh, that's not the that's not everything yes so ma'am you said like you switched from fashion designing to become a full time visual art a uh, visual artist so uh, so as you were into a creative field and you wanted to become like you wanted to be in a creative field then why did you like did that switch from fashion designing to visual art they may sound very similar but they are not exactly the same uh, for me art and uh, design are like two parallel roads which are you know moving side by side like uh, they are not the same but they are kind of similar but uh, the difference between them is that uh, Design is more um, client-centric, you know. Like you design for someone. So, uh, but whereas art is um, art is like a free expression of the artist, the creator, and uh, it it doesn't uh, need to have an end user. You know, like I don't create art because someone is going to use it unless it's applied art. So, uh, fine art is very different from uh, design because design is 
the solution and uh, art sometimes could be a question and uh, one very important factor which um, guides design is uh, commercial viability because design has to be sold so it has to have a commercial tag you know but art is free from all these commercial conditions so um, uh, when i was working in the industry uh, in fashion i worked for 15 16 years and thoroughly enjoyed my journey i learned so much uh, during that process i don't think i would take it any other way i would want it any other way i would want this journey the same way that it came you know it happened so um fashion taught me a lot of uh, uh, like uh, you know aspects of uh, design and creativity and uh and it added a different kind of dimension to my learning really but i started feeling that you know i'm not expressing myself as much as i should be and um design didn't always allow me to uh, do very free uh, create like express myself in a very free manner free and unrestricted manner you know like i felt that uh, though it was a very easy job for me and i felt that i'm sinking into a comfort zone and time is passing by so um so i decided to you know like just switch and jump onto the other parallel line called art ma on the same lines like was it easy how easy and difficult was like the switch from this line to the another like on the parallel line see it was not uh, an easy decision at all you know? because it may sound uh, sound easy but it's not that um, easy thought of uh, moving into art was kind of uh, working in the background in my head for quite some time and but the situations were not uh, you know perfect for me to jump but slowly i thought that you know uh, these are like big decisions in life and sometimes big decisions are taken uh, instantly otherwise you will never be able to take them because if you think too much if you apply too much of logic you can never do that what i did was um, uh yes i i switched over and uh, you know it was not uh, easy call at all because uh, switching over meant that i had to let go of my steady monthly income you know uh, every month i used to get the steady salary which stopped all of a sudden when i switched over so switched to a different career initially for one two months what happened was i was really missing that message which lands in your phone every month and saying salary is transferred so i was really really tempted to um uh, to get back to the job again and uh, i got several offers to join the industry back but uh, you know i kept reminding myself that i didn't leave one job to join another one so uh, there was bigger purpose of me leaving the job and uh, those days my my husband was really supportive and uh, my family was really supportive and uh, i found a lot of strength and support from my friends and uh, you know a uh, well wishers so uh, i kept on going and i realized one thing that when you jump into your passion um, it is not easy you know many times you will get a lot of uh, obstacles a lot of temptations as well those are like little whirlpools which would try to pull you inside suck you inside so um, that is the time when you really have to be strong and uh, nothing comes easy in this world you know because uh, you have to give something to get something right you cannot breathe in without breathing out so that's the logic <laughs> so uh, so ma'am so if if you had a time machine for example and you went back like your in your childhood or somewhere where you want to change your path or something so is there any situation like that you want to give yourself some advice that don't do this or that or something uh see i would not change much of things i would i would want everything the way it was uh but probably um i would uh, you know like uh, probably this the switching over my, of my career probably i would want it slightly earlier uh so that i can go for you know like further studies in art i would not change anything else i would just uh, uh, probably um, you know want a little more time those periods to be expanded so that i can fit in a little more learning <laughs> as we are talking about uh, art and visual art so now we have social media which is a uh, one of the most powerful tool for you know uh, showing your work so in what way the social media helped you to like to showcase your work to the world see i am an introvert i like to keep to myself you know like uh, 
before I left my job, I didn't uh, know about Instagram. I was on like few small, uh, uh, sorry, in um, in Facebook and all, but I was not very active in those things. So um, once I left my job, my uh, one of my very good friends told me about uh, uh, about Instagram. She introduced me to Instagram and uh, taught me the ways of using it. So um, I kind of really liked it because it was uh, I thought it was a nice platform where uh, I could meet uh, some like-minded people, share my work with people who uh, appreciate uh, you know uh, art and culture. So I took Instagram as my um, uh, as a visual journal of my journey. So it was like recording my footprints on the sand of time through Instagram. You know, so I started um, posting my work and sharing every day. And um, I remember, um, you know, like when I create something, I feel very, uh, very happy. Like the joy that you get while creating an art, uh, that is really immense. Okay, but when you share your work, and I got messages like uh, people saying that, uh, you know, how much they look forward to my post, or how much happiness the work has given them, and or it has inspired them. So these kind of messages um, really made my joy double. So um, I started, uh, you know, creating more and more and uh, sharing on a daily basis. So that way, um, I think it gave me a very nice podium to share my work and get little feedback from people. Uh, that's encouraging because every creative person needs a little bit of encouragement, a little bit of validation, you know. So, but that's not everything. You don't do it to make someone happy, but then that really helps. If somebody says something negative, it, that stays with you. Somebody says positive, it stays with you. But then. Uh, we kind of rise above that each day is a new beginning and we will start that way so um, uh, Instagram actually uh, connected me with uh, many people uh, who uh, like you know, became my friends and became my art collectors and uh, so that way I met so many amazing people some amazing friends uh, who I would not meet otherwise if it was not uh, for social media I don't think we'll be talking <laughs> like this if it is not social media. So ma'am, as we are talking about social media, I saw on your Instagram feed that you majorly, you uh, like your visual art is on female and you know, female forms. So maybe know more about it. My art actually, um, you know, my art, art style borrows a lot from my father's writing style. And my father's writing is um, uh, is very much influenced by the folk culture, by the you know the tribal experience that we have in our uh, in our uh, in our place. And um, his poetry, his writing is very simple, and it takes inspiration from nature. So most of his uh, poetry is about um, you know, describing nature as beautiful woman, and uh, many times it's the woman described as nature. So, you know, I learned that uh, skill from my father and he kind of taught me how to see things, um, uh, you know, like objects as uh, people and uh, see nature as a woman. So um, I see nature as woman. I see woman, um, you know, I see nature inside a woman as well. And this, uh, my journey of art basically is an expression of, uh, you know, uh, exploring that feminine energy in nature and uh, exploring nature within a female. So that is my, uh, you know, my uh, search that I do through my work and uh, I'm not done yet. <laughs> Yeah, so, so this for an artist, the search never gets like end, it still goes yeah. on and on and on. So, so ma'am, we are talking about the art, uh, the visual arts that you create. You have created so many, ways, like so many lovely and beautiful artwork. So, out of that, which is your favorite piece? See, um, uh, for an artist, for a uh, creative person, anything that you create is important because each one is a step towards becoming slightly better than before right so um for me each of my work is important because some taught me um, a lot of things some uh, you know uh, like um, encouraged little more uh, creativity or a little more uh, uh, what is the courage inside me some uh, you know like were mistakes which um, uh, which uh, made me stronger some were the results of my perseverance and my hard work so each of them have uh, something or the other some impact on me so each of them is really really important um, but I've seen that there are a few of my works which got a lot of love from from viewers from people around um, like the bride series that I've done the bride in red uh, you know like very classical traditional Indian movement with uh, flowers in the hair 
so um those uh, those kind of describe a simple uh, yet elegant and uh, beautiful uh, nature of a feminine she's strong at the same time she's elegant and uh, then there is this dancing foot of um, you know uh, of a dancer uh, with gungru so that one was really really liked by many people so these are uh, you know like some of the works my my shakti series my uh, durga so um, people really liked it but for me actually uh, each of them are important and uh, and uh, probably the best my most favorite uh, is yet to be done yet to be created i don't know <laughs> my journey of art is uh, searching that piece so ma'am as we are talking about the favorites so maybe know what is your favorite artist as well who is your favorite artist see like i don't have a favorite um, piece of art uh, of myself uh, of my uh, you know creations i don't have one particular artist that i really really look up to or anything i appreciate art and irrespective of who has created it i love um, the class the the old masters uh, as well as uh, you know if the work is really nice and is done by um, a fresh graduate it's equally important so um, art has been a conversation of uh, a time period and uh, every each genre every time period is important you know there is something really nice about dadaism surrealism or renaissance every period has uh, beautiful art but there are a couple of artists which i um, i feel that i wish i was an artist no so one is uh, leonardo da vinci i uh, he was he was avant garde he was ahead of his time you know like so um his uh, journey as an artist is such a fulfilling one and uh, he was courageous and um, uh, i love rothko i love uh, raza i love uh, emma fisen i love uh, clint i love uh, mone i love mane i love uh, so many uh, so many artists and uh, i think each artist um, teaches us something uh, you know there is something beautiful in everybody's art even the pop art uh, or performing art any art uh, you know like there is some beauty there is some question that is staring at you you know so i appreciate art uh, irrespective of who has created it ma'am as you mentioned so many names like so many artists and you appreciate our art like art in the whole so maybe know which is your favorite medium Uh, in painting okay so um my favorite medium um i would say is uh, ink on paper because uh, you know that's where i started my journey with my father's ink and my mother's alta so that really really um, will always be special for me because uh, it always takes me back to my roots connects me with my roots and um, ink on paper is a medium that uh, really teaches you a lot about life as well because um, when you're creating with ink and paper you uh, ink water and paper so uh, you are not a creator you are kind of a facilitator you are kind of a um, you know catalyst who is joining these mediums together so many times they just take their own uh, course uh, you know own path and uh, they create themselves so um, uh, it is really interesting because you can just sit and watch the ink flow in its own path and uh, that's pretty much how life is many times you know it's out of our control but then whatever happens is beautiful so um, ink teaches you also to um, to to appreciate mistakes you know when there are mistakes you you can't fix it you have to uh, either accept it or let go and start all over again so uh, yeah ink is really really uh, really really you know like um, therapeutic for me when i'm painting with it ma'am as we are talking about how you make your art what is your favorite medium maybe also know what is your creative process like how do you start a project uh, or start a uh, you know a painting creative process is um, is um, very different for different artists and uh, i consider myself as a very unplanned uh, artist so my process is very um, intuitive and very impromptu Uh, when i feel like painting uh, whatever material is in front of me i start painting with that so uh, you know many many times i keep my desk ready with all these uh, little bit of paper little bit of color to put the ink or maybe just blank canvas so uh, when i see blank canvas i feel really really inspired so that is that is like my mood board that i start with you know blank paper or blank canvas the process is very different when um, i have to create uh, a commissioned art 
so in that case uh, you know i'm creating the art for someone and that process is very different from when uh, i do my own practice um, so uh, in a commission art uh, i generally start with the concept sketch and i share it with the, the client and once they like it once they uh, you know we mutually agree on that concept then i get started and i share my work with the people when i like it myself so yeah it's, these are like two different processes uh, however i don't do much of commission work because you know that is more like uh, again design which is client specific and that is not as free as my own practice so so ma'am as we are talking about creative process and stuff so every artist have uh, creative blocks in their life like some artists have one time some artists have more than once so uh, do you ha- ever had a creative block and if you had so how did you overcome it see i don't think creative block is um, uh, you know it is uh, something bad or uh, it is something uh, which happens maybe once or uh, it can happen every day also right so uh, the nature of creativity is just like water because um, uh, the tendency of water is to flow and if there is any obstacle in front of water uh, water uh, water is going to either take a different route and travel or it would jump over or cut through that stone and pass through that so water is not designed to stop it will somehow find its way right so creativity is the same in, uh, you know in the same manner creativity when it's not getting expressed in one particular way that we are used to we think it's a block it, you know my creativity is over it's not that because for a, for a creative person it's a constant flow which is happening inside you it's a huge ocean which is never going to dry up it will just need different um, manifestations different uh, you know uh, like um, uh, different uh, medium to express itself so there are uh, days when i do feel like waiting so what i do is i channelize my creativity in different ways i do a little bit of gardening or i you know change the set of my house and try to show my creativity by cooking or things like that so uh, i think uh, a little bit of break from what you do normally in your creative life actually reach over there to you next day maybe you will come back stronger with what much better idea so that period is also important that period of luck before the storm you know Uh, so I mean, you use such a easy metaphor to understand the whole <laughs> concept, and it's so easy to you know channel it inside. <laughs> Ma'am, as as we are talking about creativity, so uh, due to pandemic, the like many artists have you know uh, have changed their way and stuff. So. what have changed uh, like for you in the pandemic and how like you know how your process got changed or anything or uh, unusual happened and how did you adapt to it yeah these are difficult times and uh, something which is totally unprecedented we never thought that we would see something like this in our lifetime so we are kind of living through history you know this moment this period if you pass through this it's going to be really really memorable and important for me Uh, for everybody you know like many people would uh, use it uh, in uh, for the advantage uh, as well like creating something or uh, honing uh, some new skills or uh, you know sharpening their own skills uh, <clears throat> so uh, this uh, probably many people have seen it as an opportunity to do something different to to see the silver lining in in that cloud you know so um i have been working from home all this while for last four years i have been working from home so nothing changed when this work from home started and people were locked down so i was kind of used to that uh, uh, that process of being at home and working from here what changed for me was uh, maintaining my creativity maintaining that uh, that uh, flow of uh, creativity uh, with the full house when the other members are also there I'm an introvert person. I prefer um, solitude. Solitude is like uh, music to my ears. You know? So I like um, being on my own. I don't like being watched when uh, I'm painting. I don't like uh, you know people around me when I'm painting. So um, initially, I found it very very difficult to uh, to create something when uh, the household is running. You know, like that is my son uh, doing his school or my husband is uh, you know working from home. I was finding it a bit difficult. But then slowly, uh, this uh, this pandemic taught me how to coexist you know it made me more patient uh, it um, gave me uh, more focus to you know concentrate and uh, plan a bit so that you can focus more energy and more time on your uh, 
uh, on your practice so um, yeah definitely the this pandemic made me little more uh, patient and uh, little more uh, organized so so ma'am due to pandemic you uh, it also might have affected your plans like you might have planned for some exhibitions or doing some exhibitions and stuff did it came between any or upcoming exhibitions or something like that yes it did uh, affect uh, many many things uh, worldwide the whole of art uh, you know world was affected by pandemic because uh, art is all about getting together exchanging ideas sharing ideas um showcasing your work and uh, so you know um, that was kind of uh, missing from all the artists life so we try to manage online but uh, there is nothing compared to the real life you know exhibitions so i had few exhibitions and art fairs which got uh, postponed due to this uh, pandemic and i hope uh, you know soon the the situation improves and we get back to the normal life again probably this year i have uh, i have kind of dedicated that okay this is the year of creation so we just create and uh, the exhibitions and uh, the fairs will happen maybe later so this is an opportunity to just seclude yourself and uh, create as much you can and this is a year of introspection asking questions to yourself and you know seeing what you've done how much to do uh probably a conversation with yourself ma'am as we are talking about exhibition so maybe also know why exhibition is so important for an individual artist see exhibitions are not everything but they are uh, important because uh, they are the milestones in an artist's journey most artists they like to do their work in isolation they want to work in their own you know uh, little um, world and create in their own little cocoon and then um share the work uh, with the world so earlier we didn't have uh, the power of social media the power of internet so the uh, exhibitions were the only medium where you can uh, an artist can share his or her work um, with the rest of the world so those also became uh, a, a platform where artists can uh, you know the, the work can find new homes um, and uh, the art collectors and patrons can come and visit and see the work and the artists could get some feedback uh, from people so uh, now i think uh, social media is doing a bit of it but um, but it's uh, you know having your work exhibited in in physical form and people coming over and looking at it and giving you feedback and you see the whole thing curated in a, a nice way uh, i mean it's a very different kind of experience altogether to me exhibitions teach uh, me a lot you know like visiting one or uh, having my own so uh, that is uh, where where like people who understand art who appreciate art uh, who has a real keen eye of you know uh, the the insight of art then um, they would uh, come and give you comments or give you some feedback and which is really really enriching for any artist so i think they are very very important so ma'am as we are talking about exhibition you have done so many exhibitions one of which was your first solo exhibition on moments so can we know more about it like the about the exhibition moments moments was um, uh, my first solo as an artist and um, you know um, uh, the way moments is written is like uh, you know with each letter there is a pause so um, basically i wanted to say that uh, you know this is a little collage of uh, the real the moments that i have lived as an artist creating some artworks so um, uh, you know i feel in my opinion an artist is living his life to its fullest potential when the artist is creating so um, uh, you know that is the moment when you are really being yourself true to yourself and uh, these artworks that we create are basically the testimonials of uh, those moments that we have actually lived so moments was a um, is a beautiful uh, kaleidoscope or you can say beautiful uh, collage of uh, all those tiny moments put together for me so this solo was uh, not a, a, like uh, not one thing art but it was just uh, showcasing my entire journey as an artist how i started from the from illustration towards moving towards an artist i mean uh, my it's a journey i'm still trying to be an artist it's a it's a long journey but i that is uh, moments is a chunk of that journey that i wanted to show my people and i wanted to do it in a place where um, i could have my family my my people around me when i do this so um, i did my first solo in uh, lalit kala academy in bhubaneswar and that is, that is the place where i got my first award as a child artist uh, many years ago so 
Now that place was very special for me, so I wanted to do my first solo in that same place with my my parents, my guru, my people around me. So yes, that was moment. <laughs> So uh thank you so much ma'am to take out the time so i have only one last question for you do you have any advice for like aspiring artists so they can improve or how they can you know do their artwork and how they can make the fullest out of it see sort of uh i uh, my journey as an uh, artist or my journey as an art practitioner i would say um is very very nascent and very uh, new i have just started the journey four years ago so i don't think i'm the right person to advise any artist uh, but uh, uh, but i have lived this uh, lived on this planet for uh, 40 odd years so with that experience and i have been in an um, in a creative field in like fashion design so you know that uh, those experiences put together i can give some advices which uh, may help some people you know like everybody has a different path or different journey so probably few snippets few a few uh, learnings that i got myself if i can share them that may help some people people so i would share those uh, insights that i learned from life so first thing is um, you know um, it's never too late to start i started my new journey as an artist i changed my profession and uh, switched to uh, art and started from square one without knowing much about it i just jumped in because it was my passion and uh, somehow god made the path clear for me and i could walk till now you know like that is uh, starting is very important and uh, it's never too late i mean age is not a barrier any moment that you feel that uh, you uh, your passion is something and you are doing something else and you could do better uh you know in if you jump into passion then i think you should jump into it and uh, when you jump into it don't jump in as if you know there are like other options if this this doesn't work uh, i would do something else you know so that should not be the case jump in as if there is no plan b this is the only thing that i can do and i'm i'm destined to do or uh, god has designed me to do so that thought has to be there in your mind uh many creative people are um, you know like multi uh, multifaceted they have uh, uh, many different skills okay like somebody who would be painting would be good at uh, say cooking or good at uh, photography or good at uh, many other uh, skills singing writing whatever but then uh, there would be one thing that really really connects you and um, maybe you can just instead of having so many different uh, varieties of creative channel if you just focus your creativity to one or two activities and somehow find a middle path and create then you can do more justice they can give more time you can have more impact and that is one thing and um, you know when you jump into your um, in your uh, uh, passion into your passion uh, it will not be uh, a cake walk there might be a lot of uh, you know a lot a lot of struggles a lot of hardship but then you have to remind yourself that um, these hardships these struggles will make your success story more interesting when you you know become successful so it's always a constant fight with uh, uh, your inner self and uh, pushing yourself a little more work as a, as an art practitioner as a uh, you know performing artist or any creative person your work is your language so you don't have to speak so much about your art your art your creativity will do that for you if you really really speak uh, i mean give time to it practice and practice it's nothing that compares to daily practice uh, or sadhana or riyas that you can say um, you know uh, like all these uh, big singers they are uh, renowned and all famous like lata mangeshkar the she would be um, getting up every morning and doing her riyas you know that's uh, so that um, uh practice is the power for any creative person so um daily practice is the key to improve yourself because it's a constant uh, constant journey it's not something that you just do it and finish it up it's not like that each day offers you an opportunity to be a little better than previous day you know and um, as you progress uh, slowly you will you should dislike the work that you have done in the past otherwise you have any proof you know you have to uh, if you fall too much in love with any of your art or any of your work then you would not grow from there you would just get stuck there so it's a very very um, a very um, delicate journey the journey of an artist or journey of a creative person is a very delicate journey because 
there are a lot of things which would uh, tempt you and influence you but then staying afloat and staying away from that and still trying to be true to yourself is very very important one thing is um, you know like uh, being true to yourself always ask the question what you are what is your language what is the message you want to give um, and uh, you don't try to be someone else you know like don't do something because oh that person is doing this way so uh, you know that is the way no there is no one particular just one single way to do something something beautiful if you believe in it and if you uh, relate to it and if uh, you know it is um, it is speaking to you then that is your path yeah like i said uh, art is a journey a beautiful journey so one has to enjoy the journey last but not the least um, you know an artist should uh, always be like a half full uh, vessel you should never become complete because uh, once you're complete then you cannot add any newness to yourself so you should always be a bit hungry to um, to learn little more to add little new facet to your life and uh, keep learning all your life life i think is too short so uh, we all have a lot of weaknesses and if you spend your time uh, in your life uh, working on your weaknesses then you may not have time to work on your strengths so my strategy is find that one strength and uh, and work on that make it stronger because uh, you know many people in this life millions of people don't have any idea what their passion is so identify your passion what your passion is and if you know your passion then you are uh, one of the lucky ones who knows it so um, focus your energy on your passion and make it stronger every day you know that is going to take you to um, to the fullest potential of your life or your living and make your living uh, worth it thank you so much it was really nice talking to you sara and uh, sharing my my life story and my ideas uh, with you and i thank uh, graphicsel a lot for giving me this opportunity to again share my story with you so thank you and god bless stay safe thank you so much ma'am for taking out time from your busy schedule and uh, giving us the opportunity to have your you know your journey and guys like uh, do follow her uh, her instagram handle is monarism and there you can like you can be uh, you can follow her journey you can see how she has uh, like done her journey and you can get inspired by that also so do follow her thank you so much ma'am thank you thank you so much sora Thank you.